Everyone, hi. This is Bruce Muffson, LCSW, coming at you with another video breakdown from Sunridge, Nevada. For those of you new to our channel, I want to explain what the purpose of our channel is. We want to give you information so you have a better understanding about mental health, about mental health issues. As for myself, I attended the University of Georgia, where I graduated with a master's in social work. I then had to do a two-year internship and then take a national exam to become a licensed clinical social worker. I have worked inpatient at a hospital and also done outpatient work seeing people in their homes. I have also assessed people in prison and detention facilities and have also testified hundreds of times to explain and clarify mental health issues to the judge, public defender, and the ADA. And I have also done extensive public speaking, mostly to law enforcement, about how to work better with the mentally ill. And to maintain my license, I have to take 36 hours of credits every two years to maintain it. Tonight's song, a little bit different because of how it was packaged and how it was put together. It is The Heart Part 5. And, you know, for some people, you know, if, for instance, on some sites, they have it as the last song, Song 19. However, the album only had 18 songs, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And in fact, reality was this song was released a week before he released the album. And then like there was several weeks later, it was after the album was released in May, this song was added kind of like as a third disc or as a bonus track, so to speak. But this song was released, let me make this clear, it was released before the album. All right, I'm going to break it down. As always, I'm going to give you my clinical insights on, and I'm going to let you know where I'm at clinically so you can follow along as I break it down. Here we go. This song is very interesting to me, and I want to start off with the intro. And it goes, as I get older, I realize life is perspective, and my perspective may differ from yours. I want to say thank you to everyone that's been down with me, all my fans, all my beautiful fans, anyone who's ever given me, gave me a listen, all my people. This is very interesting to me because I feel that this is like a prequel song, but it also was really giving you an idea of what to expect on the next 18 songs, where it became from Kendrick the singer to, in my opinion, Kendrick the man. You know, he opened up his heart, he opened up his soul to really express how he found himself in this point in his life and where he's at with it. It's almost like an anthem slash coda that he's put together. Verse 1. I come from a generation of pain where murder is minor. I mean, I'm not even going to argue or say this a million times more. His use of lyrics is just simply amazing. Um, and I've used so many of his lines in my own actual conversation. Generation of pain where murder is minor. Speaks the truth. Nothing really more to say. All the senseless violence that we see out there. Murder is minor. It becomes like a normal thing. A little further down, he goes, desensitized, I vandalized pain, covered up and camouflaged. Beautiful line, I mean, in its, in its simplicity, but also in its clarity. Yeah, I, I live with PTSD from the trauma I experienced. That's it. Desensitized, I vandalized my pain. I didn't want to accept it. I didn't want to deal with it. Beautiful way of expressing that. Okay, then... This is interesting to me. I'm going to talk about this after I finish breaking down the song. He brought down, we know what, he, you know, we obviously, it was him and six other people. We know who they are. But he says the word culture seven times. And I believe that the culture, which starts off with that's culture, that's culture, references these him plus the six others and looking at what are we living, how are we living, how are we going forward? It wasn't done randomly because artists don't do that. And as I said before, he reminds me in a lot of ways of Michelangelo, who when he did paintings, did subtlety in the paintings that you had to look at it on a layered level to get the full message. And I think Kendrick is, you know, fits that vein and, you know, in a long line of poets, singers, artists that give you more than you realize. Then it goes like this. Say, said your little nephew, little nephew was shot down. The culture is involved. Number two. A little further down, a brand new victim shatter those dreams. The culture. Number three. 
Then you go to verse 2. I said, I do this for my culture. Now he brings the next line down. He goes, to let you all know what a blank looks like in a bulletproof rover. I said, I do this for my culture. Number four. Then you go to verse three. And he says this line, he goes, just to see the next generation better than ours. Move upward, not backward. Yeah, it's time. Why be at a standstill? Why be going backward? Why have all of our social, emotional, mental problems? What are we doing to ourselves? Are we moving forward? Are we getting healthier? Are we getting happier? Are we part of the American dream? Or are we left out? Where are we going? I, I love that line. See the next generation better than ours. Listen, I'm a parent. And my kids, I want them to do better than me. And it's the same thing with my own culture. Whatever the culture you define as, whatever you want to base it on, are you doing better than the last culture where you still stuck in neutral going nowhere? It's a great point. Then it goes, should I feel resentful? I didn't see my full potential. Man, that comes up so much in my counseling. When people will say that to me, once they get clarity, once I put them on a plan, a mental health plan, I I had a kid, I had someone say to me, if I would have had you in second grade, I wouldn't have had the problems I had going on in my life. If I would have, I've had people say to me, if I would have had you in middle school, I wouldn't have had problems when I got older. If I was in high school, I wouldn't have had problems in college. If I had you in college, blah, 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 blah. And I say to them, you know what? Who knows if you would have even been able to understand what I was saying to you back then. You might not have been mature enough. You might not want to listen to what I said accepted it. We get it. But you know what? You have me now. And that's why I try and get people young. That's what our audience really we know is. Basically, people in high school, you know, 16 to like 30. Get it over now. Get it resolved now. Don't have that anger, that drug and alcohol abuse, that self-destructiveness. I hear that so often. Should I feel resentful? I didn't see my full potential. I've worked with people with fetal alcohol syndrome, and what do they say to me when it when you get cold about it and you break everything down? If my mother didn't do this to me, I wouldn't be the person I am today, and I know I'm deficient in my life. I never hit my full potential. Hard to hear, but it's the truth. Could have been more. And then he goes further down on verse 3, because you can't help the world until you help yourself. Hey, when I do therapy in there, I tell people, look in that mirror. Until you get better mentally, until you get better emotionally, who are you going to help? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give counseling. I'm going to take care of this person. You shouldn't, because you're not ready till you're ready. You've got to learn to take care of yourself first. Like who you are like your journey, like your destination, and then you can help others. Until you get to that point, you're not ready. Then, that's the culture. Point the figure, promote you. Number five. Go a little further, but that's the culture. Crack a bottle. Hard to deal with the pain when you're sober. Number six. Great line, by the way. Hard to deal with the pain when you're sober. He flips it around very nicely. Yeah, who wants to be sober and deal with all the craziness? People say to me, why do, you, why do people use drugs and alcohol or overeat or get into crazy relationships? Who wants to deal with reality? That's painful. That's work. Yeah, why, why be stable? Be screwed up. It's a lot easier. And then finally... In the land where hurt people hurt more people, blank calling it culture, number seven. Him plus the six others. You know what he's saying? It's a, silk, it's a sick culture. It's a defective culture. It's a culture that gives us cancer. It's a culture that limits us. It doesn't let us get to our full potential. And that's what you deal with when you have people around you that cause you trauma, that cause you dysfunction, that cause you pain, that cause you misery, that cause you self-doubt, not to have confidence in yourself. 
in a land in the land where hurt people hurt more people, blank calling it culture. We think this is all normal. Bam, bam. The pain, the agony, the suffering, the frustration, it's not a culture. It's not a way of life. It's repulsive and it's sickening. And it's time for it to come to an end. And that's what he's telling everybody in these lyrics. It's over. Let's stop pretending. Let's stop giving this credence and saying it's normal and healthy. And that's just the way it is because it's not. Wake up. Now, the song, again, I read hundreds of comments, saw the video like 15, 20 times. It's a great song. The, the lyrics, just he's at the top of his game right now. The background chords and the, and the mute, just fantastic how he blends the music and the chorus. It's fantastic. No argument. One of his greatest songs ever, I believe. And people were saying this over and over again. I got to agree. But I want to make five points. Push the status quo. If anything Kendrick has said to me is don't accept it. Push. Push for more. He's basically saying, guys, I reached the pinnacle. I'm at the mountaintop, but it's time for me maybe to move on or look at myself in a different light. I've given you the hope, the promise, the perspective. What are you going to do with it now? Who's going to take my role? Who's going to want to ascend to leadership in a positive way, in a healthy way, being involved with my family, not doing self-destructive actions, being proud of who I am. You deserve more out of life. So many people will say this to me, I wish, I wish, I wish, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Don't be that person. Push yourself. And if it's a small action, I don't care. But go positive. Don't go negative. The culture part, again, him and the six others, he does a great job bringing it in. But he's telling you, I'm looking at these people. These are people I understand. These are people that bring a certain amount of perspective, how they look at things. Look at them as people. But at the same time, look at yourself. The missing face really is you. You, the audience, that are watching and listening to the video and listening to these lyrics right now. Who's going to step up? Who wants the ball? Who wants the game two minutes left in the, in the game? Because of our surroundings, we sink into the swamp. We don't know how to rise up. Hey, you know what? I didn't have the greatest childhood either. Made a ton of mistakes, screwed up in a lot of ways. But you look for a way out. Don't give up. Never, never give up. Find the right counseling. Find the right therapy. And push yourself. Push Push, push, never give up. And I'm going to make this very clear for the thousands of people, the tens of thousands of people, the hundreds of thousands of people that have watched our videos. I get it. You come into a session with me, you're going to leave differently. This channel was created to give that to the world, to realize with no issue with ego or anything of that, there is no one better than me than what I do. And you notice from the comments that you leave and the comments that I give back to you and all that we've done in the last six years or so, I am the best. And I say that with no embarrassment. But my goal is the one-on-one -on -one was great. I want to reach the world. That is our goal at Sunridge, Nevada. We want to reach the world. We were very specific about what album we were going to break down. We owe a lot to Kendrick. He opened the door for us with his lyrics and got us noticed. And we appreciate you, Kendrick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And whatever you do in the future endeavors, God bless. You deserve it. You've given so much back in what you've done so far. We're in the same situation today. This song, this last song, is our anthem now. We're going to go now. We're still going to make the music videos. We know what you people like and we get it. Send us your interest, who you like. But going forward, we're going to be moving heavily into the live streams and into the trainings. And there'll be more information being released about that in the next few weeks. But this is our direction. We've proven ourselves. We know what you want. We know how to deliver it. There is, again, no one better out there than me when it comes to trauma and dysfunction. I do other things well, I'm not going to deny. 
But that's my ace in the hole. That is what I am the best at. Be aware of what's coming. Give us any information via email, what you want to know about, any questions you have. But this is where it's all going. Any comments, any questions about this song, how it branched with the other 18, what you got out of this song, let us know. We live for the comments. That's it from here. Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge, Nevada.